All right, it looks like we are live. That's what it says on my computer screen. We are live. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Allison. My Hello. name is Diane Rose Solomon, and I am the founder of Animal Magic Films. Let's get this kitty up there. Thank you for joining us for our 20th interview in the science and magic of the human animal bond interview series. We will be exploring many of the ways that animals help people and people help animals. It's what I call a both and conversation where everybody benefits from this relationship and from the bond. I know I have personally benefited immensely from my relationships with my pets, from a surprise therapy dog visit years ago when I was in the hospital, and I also experienced great joy watching other people heal from their interactions with pets and with therapy animals and with service animals. And I'm also in awe of non-companion animals like farm animals, wild animals, and more. So be sure to like this video, subscribe on YouTube, join our Facebook group, you know what to do. But now we get to hear from you. We get to hear from my guest today, Allison. We get to hear from people who are making our relationships with our pets, our communities, and our environment just a little bit better. So welcome, Allison Hunter Frederick. And you are with Allison Helps Cats, correct? Yes. Great, it's so nice to see you, Allison. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. I'm really excited to speak with you today. So let me tell you a little bit about Allison, and then I have a lot of questions to ask her. So Allison is a cat behaviorist, cat behavior consultant and trainer as well as the mother of four fur kids and a wife of a supportive husband. Through her business, Allison Helps Cats. Allison helps cat owners with anything from changing their cat's unwanted behavior, to improving their cat's basic care, to adding fun to their cat's life, and to teaching their cats tricks. So she also creates an animal welfare village for pet lovers through educational articles, profiles, and tributes at her blog, Lincoln Pet Culture. And her youngest cat, Rainy, who we, I saw a few minutes ago, we'll see if Rainy comes back, and Allison bring happiness to seniors and youth as a certified cat therapy team. So are we shaking, are we shaking the treats now? <laughs> we'll see I'm Rainey. shaking the treats, see if she'll come. Okay, Not great. Yet. Well, maybe she'll come back in a little bit. So <laughs> Allison, tell me, what inspired you to get involved with cat training and behavior? So it's uh, it was kind of many paths, and it actually started from the dog world. Uh, my husband and I have a toy poodle, and my husband used to take his poodle to agility classes and competitions, and I would go watch and be with them, and I would come home, and I would try stuff that I had learned at classes with my cat, who was my, that we had at the time, who was my very first cat. Uh, this would have been, oh, 10, oh, let's see, 15, 20 years ago, I guess now. Uh, and also has a way for me to bond with our dog. I took him to obedience classes again, came home, tried that with my cat. Uh, like I said, this was about 10, 15 years ago, which means uh, it was before people knew cats could be trained. Uh, and well, it was my first cat. I didn't know that cats couldn't be, you know, I didn't know that people were saying cats can't be trained. So I just went home and trained her and I enjoyed it. Uh, and then when we, when she passed from kidney failure and then we got our current cats, I just kept training my cats. That was uh, 2015. And by that time, of course, I had kind of heard, I was a lot more into the cat world, kind of, but I heard people saying, oh, cats can't be trained. And it's like, well, I'm training mine and I love it and I'm not going to stop and actually really wanted to be able to do some classes and stuff with them. Uh, my youngest cat, Rainy, if she, whoops, here we go. I'm off screen for a second so I can bring her. My youngest cat, Rainy, she was a kitten at the time. So she would get into everything and she just had tons and tons of energy. And I found doing agility and training kind of got that energy out. So I really wanted to do classes and competition with her, but there was nothing in, nothing even in the state for, do, for doing cat agility. And I thought about opening my own agility place, but that was like, that's just 
so much to that and I didn't want to do that. But it kind of was like, okay, I want to do something. Uh, so that was one road. And then another road was the lady who found Rainy and who brought uh, her to us, uh, she did dog agility and uh, dog therapy. Yeah. Uh, I had heard about uh, pet therapy and I thought of actually doing it with our dog when he retired from agility competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that time, Rainy came along and I took her to a couple dog agility courses and tried her and she was really nervous being out in public, but she liked agility. And so I thought, well, and I, and I talked with this lady who did a dog therapy um, who had found Rainy and we were just like, well, you know, maybe cut therapy because that would give her all that social experience. Mm -hmm. And if we go on at some point that I could do agility, like, because the CFA has competitions, and if we got to go travel, or if they ever came here, then she's ready. So got her into therapy, uh, not knowing that it, once again, kind of was doing something that in my area, no one's doing cat therapy. You're right. So I uh, wrote articles, talked about it, talked to different people, and everybody kept saying, well, my cat is really friendly, but they don't like the carrier or they don't like the leash or they don't like this. Or they don't like that. And so again, it was that thing of, okay, so cats can't do this. Cats can't do this. I kept hearing that and kept thinking about that and it kept bugging me. Um, so that's another kind of thing that led into all of this. And then the third thing that led into all of this was I was, a uh, since 2015, blogging for a local animal welfare group. Uh -huh. And in my research, I kept seeing cats get surrendered because of behavior. And also our cats are in trouble because we have tons more cats that are relinquished and get euthanized than dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I kept thinking, well, I'd like to do something about it, but I don't know what to do about it. And uh, kept thinking, you know, there has to be a way to change the behavior. Uh, you know, someone needs to work with their behavior and then we could do therapy and we could do training and we could do all these wonderful things. And I even remember talking to, um, it's not a job I'm at now, but the, uh, there was a job that I was at at a church and I was talking with my boss who was the pastor and he kept saying to me, he said, well, you know, you're going to be the person who's going to be that person, right? And I said, oh, someone else has to do it. I don't <laughs> know anything about how to do this and there's no oh. money in it. And, but yeah, uh, it was only like a year after that conversation that I took a class just kind of for fun, just to try it. Um, the what, humane kind of society, class? It, what kind of class was it? It's a cat behavior and retention class. Yep. Um, and it was only $60, which is the really awesome thing, because if it had been 1000 or 2000 I would not have tried it. Right. But $60 class from Humane Society United States, and I tried it. It was all about the basic main behavior problems cats have. And at the end of that class, course, they say, if you've gone through all of this, then if you're helping at a shelter, you have the basics to help with those behavior needs. Right. And... I told my husband, I said, I love this class. If there was anything money in it, you know, if I could make a living out of it, this is what I want to do. And he said, then you should do it. And so you put all those things together of that, you know, cats, I want, I love training. Cats should be able to be trained. Uh, I want it to get more people doing cat therapy and it always came down to the behavior thing. And so I thought, well, I'll just go to the root of it. I'm going to address that root problem of cats have behavior issues and not socialize, all those kind of things. And maybe in the future, if enough of us are doing that, we'll have people, we'll have cats that are therapy cats and cats that are trained and doing all kinds of fun things like agility. So that's my very long, windy story. Of no, it's not long. And, you know, <laughs> what I love the most is that you know, you were, you wouldn't take no for an answer. Like, you know, well, first of all, it was like you didn't even know that there was this 
you know, mystique about cats not being trainable or whatever. So you just sort of went forward and you did it. And then when there was a little pushback, you, you kind of knew from experience, you already knew that, no, but I can train cats, not just like one cat that was like a brilliant cat, but all of my cats, you know, and, and I can help you train your, and, and not just for the sake of training, but I love how you went to like the root of, let's look at also behavior issues too. So it's like, some of it's for fun, you know, as I read in your bio, and some mm -hmm. of it's to have a better relationship, you know, and, and also from the yeah. shelter stamp standpoint, how can we find loving homes for these, these cats? Or Absolutely. keep them in their homes so that they don't ever go into the shelter. Yeah, e equally, if not more important. I agree 100%. So that's really great. So so you've answered the question, you know, that people have asked me, you know, can cats be therapy cats? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to hear, because obviously there's way more therapy dogs than there are cats. But yes. But it's become, you know, there are therapy cats. In fact, I remember really quickly this video that I watched a couple of years ago about baby, baby kittens who were so little still that they were being bottle fed and the, the rescue group that had them couldn't bottle feed them around the, the clock. So they brought them to a senior center what? and they just put them in the arms of some um, of some of the Alzheimer's patients, some mm -hmm. of them who had never spoken in like two years. Oh and goodness. like one, you know, so they had to help bottle feeding because these people were helping to bottle feed. And some of these people were talking to the cats. They hadn't spoken a word. In years, so that was that's sort of my amazing. first entree to therapy cats because wow. essentially that's therapy. Um, but then when I learned about what you do, I'm like, well, I want to learn more about this. So could you tell me more about the cat therapy? I mean, like some of your experiences with cat therapy, and also, um, you know, are more people allergic to cats than dogs? And I'm making this up. Tell me about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so do you want? me to tell you a little bit how we get like go how you, I trained Rainy to get into that therapy sure. or just some of our experiences all of the above we got time <laughs> okay <laughs> uh well I, I it helped that I got Rainy as a kitten and she was very outgoing I, you know, I think there is something that uh not all cats are going to be therapy cats uh, I mean, they're all could be, they're going to give love and happiness, et cetera, but not all of them are going to grow up and be therapy cats because some of them maybe are more shy or et cetera, don't, it doesn't yeah. work. Or they don't get the experiences to go there. We started with Rainy has a kitten. She was so outgoing, so curious, so, uh, and, you know, anything that happened, she was just like, kind of like, oh, okay, I'll keep going. <laughs> and so that's the one thing. Uh, you know, we have two cats, uh, other cats who one of them we got at, at one year and she's more reserved. It, she would not be able to be that snuggle bunny to other people and not necessarily that they have to, but she also just would not enjoy it. She would not yeah. like going out and doing that. Really so thing. it comes down to if they have the personality to do it, but there are tons and tons of friendly cats and inquisitive cats. So then you build on it. And with Rainy, I knew she had a personality that I thought would be great for going out. So I just took her to meet all kinds of people and people of all different ages, different groups, took her to all kinds of places, uh, introduced her to different types of stimuli. When I knew I was going to train her to be a therapy cat, uh, we thought about sounds that might be in a senior's home. So we'd have like a spoon dropping on the floor. We'd um, some things I didn't think of, like the sound of an elevator or the sound of a wheelchair, those we learned on the job. Okay. Uh, and so it was just exposing her to a variety of things. I, and cats can do that when they're older. I mean, you might have a six-year-old cat who's very social and friendly. You just go slow and start introducing them and giving positive experiences. They could still turn out to be a therapy cat. And it doesn't have to start with being a kitten. Uh, and then the other thing is they do have to be able to like car rides mm -hmm. and they also do need to be able to be on a leash. It's a requirement. Then they have to follow the same rules as the dogs, be on a leash. It's for their security and everybody's safety. Uh, so you have to train them again in that positive way to get used to those things. Mm -hmm. It could be done at any age. I mean, I wish my first cat I had known about therapy work. I think she was so 
I, she was so loving and friendly. I think she would have made a good therapy cat. I just didn't know anything about it at the time. Mm -hmm. And then it's developing that bond and which you mentioned of, uh, you know, Rainy and I, if, if Rainy and I go somewhere and there's something that startles her, she's looking to me because she knows that I'm her, her person and I'm going to keep her safe. And that's something that's really important because you can be in a place where the alarms go off or there could be, I know one person um, who's a therapy cat team, the lady said that they were at a senior's home and the ambulance came and there was all kinds of emergency people there and her cat was just like, okay. Mm -hmm. So you just don't know what's going to happen. And so they have to have that bond that they're going to watch you. It, it, but it's also, it kind of grows when Rainy and I started um, I kept asking people, I said, you know, she's, she's not a lap cat yet. And she's a little nervous of sounds. So I don't know, maybe she's not going to be a therapy cat. And people kept saying, it'll be fine. You just train her. And we did. I mean, the longer I visited people, the more I visited people, uh, she got used to things. So she went from being a cat who most of the time would be in the room and be a presence to, she would lay on their laps to, we could be in a common room with a, a bunch of people and she would just sit with somebody mm -hmm. and watch TV with them. And so it, it, it grows, it develops uh, as you do it. Really amazing. So, so what do you do when you get to a place where you're doing some, um, you know, some therapy work, you know, as a team? Um, and people say I'm allergic or, you know, I don't like cats or, you know, wh what's your response? Well, some people really are allergic and the, the beauty of the therapy pet world is there's more than one type of pet who does it. So, yeah. uh, I usually know of people doing dog therapy and I can just say, well, maybe, you know, you know maybe a, th a dog therapy theme would be better. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there are also people who they're not really allergic. They just are uncertain. Mm -hmm. And so I also kind of leave the door open. It's like, well, it was nice to meet you. Uh, you know, I'll leave my info with, you know, the coordinator. And, you know, if you change your mind, we're going to be here every, you know, I'll say when we're going to be here. And we're always happy to drop by. And then I... And sometimes if I get, if I kind of feel like maybe they're a little insecure and it's not really allergies, I might just on my rounds, just pop my head and say, hi, um, you know, we're doing a round, just want to see if you wanted us to visit. And, and usually people will hear about other people getting visits and if they're interested, then they're going to say, oh, you know, you could come in. I don't think it's as bad as I thought it was or something. So, um so uh, we have allergies, and then the other thing sometimes people worry about is scratching. Okay, so what do you um, do with that? And one is, you know, we're, I, don't know if we're, I think we're required, but anyway, I know it's kind of protocol that we always clip the nails beforehand so they're very short and, you know, trimmed so that there's minimal chance. And then the other thing that we usually do is, you know, put a, a, a blanket or a bedding or something on a lap mm -hmm. because even if a cat is extremely calm and everything, if the, something startles them, they could jump in surprise. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. but then you have that little barrier that keeps That's anybody smart. from getting scratched. Uh, and, and the thing is that uh, just like in the dog world, like I said, they have to follow the same rules. You know, if a cat bites or scratches that, kind, you know, deli well, I think it's the bites. If they bite, they can't be a therapy cat. Right, of course. So yeah. there's certain protocols we have to follow. And if there is some kind of injury, we have to report it. And we have to figure out, you know, how could we have prevented it? So there's always these precautions in place. Rainy has never scratched anybody because uh, we always use the blanket. And she, I guess she's really well trained. So she, something startles her. She look, she she runs to me if she's really, really startled. That's an, that's an amazing relationship that she doesn't run away, that she runs to you. And, you know, I just want to remind everybody that's watching or listening that this, this therapy animal work that you do is volunteer. You're not paid for that work. This is volunteer work. And I really, I, you know, it's really amazing that you do this work. If either of my dogs 
were the type <laughs> and, and had the uh, the personality to be therapy dogs, we would, but they don't, so we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how um, has cat therapy fared during the pandemic? How has it been the past year? Uh, it's been, I think it's been hard for everybody. Uh, there has been some virtual cat therapy. Mm -hmm. And so there's been different groups that have sprung up where you can sign up and you get to uh, do little short visits virtually with seniors. Oh, that's nice. And the nice thing about that is that that means any cat gets to do it. I mean, they don't have to be certified because yeah. they don't, uh, they just have to be comfortable being on, on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, and I know of, uh, some of my uh, other cat therapy uh, people who they've done that. Uh, and then others of us, like, I actually, I think Rainy's getting more comfortable, but initially when we started, it was like, she just did not understand why am I in front of a screen? That's not being on a person's lap. It's not mm -hmm. getting touched by a person. I'm not visiting someone. I mean, I don't know for sure what was going through her head, but I just know that she just, she, she kind of, if I coaxed her with treats, she'd come and sit and be with, uh, in right. front of the screen. But it wasn't something she understood. I mean, she's all about that human yeah. cat contact. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing is because we can't, uh, you know, the, the most senior places were shut down. You can't go visit. Uh, our, I know the library programs. I mean, I kept seeing it on, um, I'm part of a cat therapy group, and I kept seeing as the pandemic progressed of like, oh, we're closed. We can't do this. Keep getting all the reports. Yeah. And I know like uh, about a month in that our local library stopped its reading to a pet program. So, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities to go out. And in a lot of places, you also just can't really go out places. Yeah. So I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of teams are anxious to get back. I know a lot of teams struggled with one of the reasons they got into this is, be, I mean, obviously to give, but also because their cats love doing it. Mm -hmm. So they are deprived of something they love doing and they miss that. And they're a little bit more trouble around the house because they don't understand why can't I go away? I've heard this, you know, because you think like the people on the other end, the quote unquote receiving end are the ones who are really missing out. But I've, you know, I've heard over and over that it's also the people on the giving end, people like in your position who have the therapy animal, that, you know, that they're sad too, and they're missing doing it. And, and yeah, like the, the pets need more stimulation, more attention. And, you know, it's just, it's not even the same. They like doing that work. It's just, it's really awesome. It's really well, awesome. and the, the other thing would be, I, you know, there's ones doing different things, like summer in airports, summer with kids, all different types of things. For those, um, those of us who are working with seniors, there was a lot of time where we would get the news that the person we were visiting died. And yeah. uh, there was a gentleman that uh, had, um, you know, we'd visit regularly and uh, a couple months into the pandemic, I got the news that he died and it was just like, I know how much he loved those visits. And mm -hmm. I just was really, I think we have electrical outages going on, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I have a little psychedelic it, look to you, it's good. <laughs> it was so hard that, I mean, I know we weren't his whole life, but I know that he looked forward to the visits and it was so hard that for a few months, you know, in the, in the last years, in the last, sorry, the last of his life, we couldn't give him that happiness that he was getting yeah, from us. I know, but he had it prior. So that's what we yeah. have to think about. Before we wrap up, do you have any favorite story you want to share? Uh, so the very first lady that we did cat therapy with, uh, we were matched with her by, um, the supervisor in the senior place because we were new, but this lady loved cats and was very sweet and very kind of open to every, you know, whatever we did. So with her, Rainy learned how to sit on a person's lap and stay on a person's lap. We also just kind of were that presence of sitting and watching TV. Uh, we'd sit and talk. She was always just so gracious to us. And so on our end, we benefit so much from that experience. 
And then on Arian, I know that she looked forward to see, to us coming. She mm -hmm. talked during in between all the time about us being there. She and her family knew we were doing the visits. I, and we got I you know, it got to time when I could tell that she was starting to slip. Mm -hmm. Um and it was really special to me that uh, the week when they felt that she was probably going to pass, that we got a call saying, you know, if you want to go in and do a special visit, you probably should. So we went in and Rainy, I put her on the lady's bed and Rainy slept with her for a while and like her chin on her arm right next to her. And then a couple of days later, she died. And it was so special that we were part of that experience. And um, that would be my beautiful. favorite. That's beautiful. I mean, I had chills as you were sharing that story because it's really just really beautiful. And that's exactly the, the benefit that you offered comfort. You and Rainey offered comfort to this person. And it could be, it doesn't have to be a senior person. It could be all sorts of different types of people. But in this case, it was. And that's really quite beautiful and quite amazing. So um, in order to support your um, this wonderful volunteer work that you do, you do have a business. And so I want to just remind everybody exactly what you do for, with this business. And I'm going to share how people can find you. Oops. There you go. People can find you at AllisonHelpsCats.com. You want to tell everybody a little, little bit about your business for, right before we go? Uh, just a cat behavior consultant and trainer. And I offer with, you know, adding enrichment to cats' lives, tricks, all kinds of cool, fun things, but also if they're struggling to fit in somehow and so they're going outside the litter box or they're uh, having aggression, I help with those issues. So kind of on both sides and I do webinars and classes and consultations. So a wide variety of ways that I help people. Uh, even have a monthly chat where people can just send a question and those monthly chats are free and people can just hop on and uh, get the that's great. really quick questions answered. And that's um, great. That's really cool. I love it. Anything else before we go that you want to make sure that, that we share? Because I want to make sure that everybody get, got to hear everything. Well, I'd also like to share that Rainy does have her own Instagram account. Oh, important. Yeah. Rainy Therapy Cat. Uh, so I'm sure Rainy would love to get some more followers and she does interview, uh, cats about tricks and adventures and, uh, therapy and, and she just loves having visits on her account. So that's great. <laughs> so I will, I will check out, say it again. What's the Instagram account? Uh, Rainy therapy cat, you know, I probably is right out of my head. Like Rainy uh, yes. Rainy, cat? Rainy, the therapy cat. Rainy, the therapy cat. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I will make sure that that's in the show notes for anybody who wants to, to, to join. So Rainy, the therapy cat. Well, thank you, Allison. This has been wonderful. I've really enjoyed learning more about what you do and the beautiful work that you do with Rainy as a therapy cat team and, it's really quite beautiful. So before we go, just a few quick announcements. Um, you can visit Animal Magic Films to join our community and learn about upcoming films and news that we have. If you are not watching this in our Facebook group, The Science and Magic of the Human Animal Bond, please join us here. Um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Animal Magic Films. And if you have a story that you, hi, Rainy, that you'd like to share about the human animal bond, you're welcome to email me, diane at animalmagicfilms.com. And this is you again. So thanks again, Allison, for joining me today. Um, really beautiful work that you do, both professionally and volunteer. And thank you to everybody who has joined us today for spending time with us. And we'll, we will be back in a couple of weeks with another fabulous guest. Bye, Rainy. Bye, Allison. <laughs> Take care.